In today's video I'm going to do a brief review and demonstration of my brand new HO scale layout that I just completed the track work and wiring. Before I get too far in the video I just wanted to um, let people know that this is a layout that I designed myself. Um, this is what I wanted out of my layout. Uh, I know everybody has an opinion on what what is prototypical and what works for them. I have a very limited space that I was able to build this layout, so uh, I wanted to be able to accomplish a couple different things that I'll talk about during this video. But this is this is what I wanted, this is what I visioned and anticipated, and uh, let's go ahead and start talking about some of the layout. So the overall dimensions of this layout are, at its width, it's at the widest, 36 inches wide, and that's where the uh, outer radius is. Uh, the outer run actually goes uh, around so you can see where, where the outer 18 degree radius curves are that's 36 inches it tapers into about 24 inches in the middle and then again it, it uh, flares back out to about 36 inches uh, at its maximum width lengthwise this is um, from back corner to back corner nine feet so it's a nine foot basically by three foot layout as it, and it tapers in one of the issues that I had with my last layout is it was uh, basically it was a 9x4 layout but it was a solid piece and it was big and bulky and heavy and it made it moving out of the basement almost impossible. So this is actually in two sections. So I have two four and a half foot sections. You can see right down the middle here that's actually where uh, the two pieces come together. So this is actually a modular design. Uh, this front piece uh, on the on the fascia actually covers up where the joint is. All the track and cork are actually split right down the middle, so um, I can actually take both parts of halves, or take both parts, pull both halves apart, uh, and all the track is uh, cut right at the seam. The only real issue I had with uh, doing the two pieces is unfortunately this turnout right here actually falls right down the middle of the seam which is a little bit of a challenge because um, I actually power routed all of the frogs so the frog is on this half of the seam the um, point rails are on this half and all of my turnouts are, are hooked up to tortoise switch machines so it was a little bit of a challenge uh, when I do if I ever decide to move this I actually have to dismantle that turnout take the uh, tortoise off and then unhook the wire from the frog before I can actually separate both halves. So this layout is actually all together and ready to go. I'll, I'll, I'm going to show some of the highlights here. I didn't make any videos while I was actually building the layout. I took some pictures during the construction that I'll show you here as we progress through the video. One thing I just wanted to highlight real quick, you'll notice that the fascia is uh, very minimal. There's no mechanical uh, switches or anything that controls parts of the layout. I just have two UP5 um, ports to plug in my Digitrex, Digitrex throttle. I run my turnouts through my hand throttle um, and I do have some switches underneath the layout that I'll actually show you but I, I want to keep I'm very particular. I like keeping the front fascia of the layout very clean um, and I don't like it cluttered with a lot of switches or other uh, mechanical um, components. So here are some of the things that make my layout unique. Um, I used all Code 83 track. Um, for the most part, I used uh, strictly Atlas um, Snap. I'm sorry, uh, Flex Track. I did use Snap Track for the outer 18 degree radius because I, I'm just I'm, I'm not very good at getting a good, smooth, consistent 18 degrees or whatever radius with uh, laying flex track. I know you can buy templates, so I just used uh, snap track for the outer radius. Everything else is flex track, um, which is it minimizes the seams and it helps get you a better electrical connection. One of the things you'll notice in the yard, and I was uh, again very particular about this, I wanted to make sure that I had the track and everything laid before I started running trains on it. I used Walther's uh, turnouts for the layout, so all of the turnouts are Walther's number four, either left or right. I do have a Walther's curve turnout. 
but when you're doing the Walther's turnouts, you actually have to trim some of the rails from, or um, the, some of the ties from the end of the rails to get the rail joiners to work. So I ended up um, making sure that's just one of it's one of my pet peeves. I don't like seeing um, sections of track that don't have ties underneath them. The flex tracks the same way. You have to trim the ties at the end to get the flex track to come together. So you can see I've gotten all the ties back in place where where I had to remove them to get the rail joiners to connect. Here's just a close-up. All of my track has been painted. After I ran the feeder wires, uh, after I soldered the feeder wires to all of the um, rails, I spray painted all the track and um, a real dark brown because the color, the uh, turnout ties from Walther's are black and then the ties from the Code 83 Atlas Snap track are brown so the, the colors didn't match. So to get the colors to match I spray painted every single piece of track the same color and then I just put, took a paper towel with some mineral spirits, got the paint off the top of the rails, actually laid all the track and then um, hand painted, and I'll show you a close up picture here, I hand painted all of the rails a rusty rail, or you know, a rust color. So it really, um, the video doesn't do it justice uh, to the naked eye, the, the, the rails are just, they're very prototypical appearing in terms of their color. So another, another thing that I'd really like to highlight is the difference between the uh, height of the main line and I have a single main line that runs the perimeter of the layout and then any uh, sidings or yards. So you can see I actually just used just regular um, cork for the main for the main line and then I went to a hobby store, um, Hobby Lobby as a matter of fact, and you can get rolls of cork. So, so for the yard I actually used, it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick uh, just plain piece of cork. So there's cork underneath the yards, there's cork underneath the siding, so then it, it gives a better prototypical appearance of the main line actually being slightly elevated compared to uh, any sidings or the yard. Here's just another quick video that really just sort of shows, and I know some of this is the angle of the camera, it's not quite this pronounced, but there is a definite height difference between the rails uh, of the yard, which is the bottom set of rails, and the main line, which is the top set of rails. Here's just another view uh, of my yard and my engine household, which I'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, but I calculated I can fit probably, not including what's on the main line, I can fit about 24 cars, 50-foot uh, covered hoppers between the yards and the siding that I have where the green elevator is going to go. This piece of track right here, this is actually a prototypical caboose track and uh, because my layout is modeled from about you know somewhere in the late 70s early 1980s cabooses were still the standard for operations so um, that's a caboose track but probably more importantly this track is actually electrically isolated this is my programming track since I know I'm not going to be running a lot of locomotives on here I actually electrically isolated this section of track and made that my programming track so I can uh, hook up my computer with JMRI and do a bunch of uh, CV changes with the decoders. One of the focal points of my layout is going to be the Walther's diesel house and you can see I actually have the base in place. I needed to have the base in place to be able to build the layout. So I got the base painted. Uh, you can see the inspection pits. Um, the rails are actually on here. Uh, at the very top here you can actually see here is the Walther's uh, diesel refueling center. I had to kit bash this a little bit. The diesel facility itself is built for a double rail coming in. I simply didn't have enough space. I didn't have two long enough sections of track that were spaced far enough apart. So I had to kit bash that. So that's just going to be a single rail coming in. I have to build the rest of the diesel house and have to build the rest of the refueling station. But I needed to get the bases in place so I could run the rails and make sure that everything worked out. So these are actually in place and ready to go. I'm going to show the underside of the layout here in just a second with the wiring, but what I ended up doing with the diesel house is, you can barely see it, but I actually have um, plastic rail joiners all the way across. So the rails in the diesel house are actually electrically isolated from the rest of the layout, and then underneath I have a double pull, or yeah, double pull, double throw switch that I can actually um, 
kill the kill the power to the diesel house so I can have locomotives parked in there flip the toggle switch kill the power so I can run trains on the rest of the layout and anything I have parked in the diesel house uh, won't won't be drawing current off of my uh, command station so here's a view you don't get to see very often of a model railroad and that's the underside of the layout uh, before it's actually set up and I wanted to do this because I really wanted to give you a good close look at the wiring and good lighting without trying to you know contort the camera to be able to get, view, get good views of it so um, I'm going to go in a little bit of detail of how I did the wiring on this layout. So this truly is a modular layout and you can see uh, right in the middle there's a gap of where the two sections join together and I really wired these two uh, sections separately so either one can be run independently if it has its own uh, DCC system. The reason why I did this is I wanted to make it easy to connect and disconnect the two halves. So all I need to do uh, to be able to connect this is uh, literally when the, when the two halves come together, um, right up here I have two quick connect um, phone jacks so I can plug in my local net cables there. Uh, right down here is the red bus line, right up here is the black bus line, and I just got two electrical connectors on there. So literally, when the two halves come together, it's going to be connecting four wires. I'm going to take the electrical cord and plug it in up here. I have power strips on both sides. So really, this uh, both halves run independently of one another, and it'll be very quick to connect them when, when the two halves come together or get taken apart. So here's just a look at the uh, right side of the layout, and this is the one that has the majority of the turnouts on it. So you can see I have uh, DS64s here, I have several tortoise switch machines that control the turnouts. Um, you can see the black bus line runs along the top here, the red bus line runs along the bottom. I've read that you want to keep the two bus lines separate uh, because you can get some electrical interference between the two wires. So off of my two bus wires, I have uh, all of my feeders, feeder wires from the rails, and uh, you can see there's a lot going on here. I would estimate I spent probably 25 to 30 hours wiring this layout. Every single section of flex track on the layout has feeder wires attached to it, whether they were three inches long or three feet long. Um, I put feeder wires off of every third piece of snap track, which is the outside 18 degree radius. Every single turnout has a, a, a feeder wire off the frog, so I can power out the frogs, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Some of the turnouts have feeders off of them, depending upon where they were at on the layout, so there's a lot of feeders. A lot of the feeders I actually did cover up with electrical tape. There's, there's bundles of wires in there. I tried really hard to try to keep this as organized as possible to help troubleshoot if there's ever an issue. So um, really all of these... I know it's probably, it looks like a plate of spaghetti, but um, it, it really actually is fairly well organized and I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. Here's just a quick view of the other half of the layout so you can see my uh, uh, command station is up here. I have a um, uh, uh, power cord strip here where I can plug in. I have another DS64 over here. Uh, I actually have this woodland scenic plug and play uh, for the LEDs for some of the structures I have. Up here, right here, is the switch that controls the uh, the plug-and-play lighting system. I have some turnouts down here. I'll scroll up just a little bit. I have uh, a couple more turnouts, and then my UP5 power supply is actually right there, where I can plug in my Digitrax throttle. So, as I mentioned, I did power route the frog. So, what I ended up doing, so. This green cable here, this green wire, actually runs up to the frog of, on one of the turnouts on my layout. So this wire actually comes in and I'm going to control the, um, the power to the frog with the tortoise switch machine with the internal um, switch that each tortoise has. So how I wired my tortoises, if you look at the wiring instructions, you have um, eight separate uh, terminals on the tortoise, one through eight. Terminal one and terminal 8 actually are the power supply to the motor of the turnout. So these two wires here, 1 and 8, actually come up. I use terminal strips for every turnout. So this is 1, this is 8. I only have 5 on here because I'm not using 3 of them. So both of these actually get routed back to my DS64 down here at the very bottom of, of the camera. So these control 
the actual function of the motor. Run off the DS64, I use my hand throttle and I, I um, throw my turnouts using my Digitrax hand throttle. I do not have any toggle switches to control the turnouts. So those two control the, the actual switch machine motor. Terminal ports 2, 3, and 4 are one set of the internal switches and 5, 6, and 7 are the second set. So I'm, not, I'm only using one of the internal switches so I have not used terminal 5, 6, and 7 on my tortoise and you can see right here that those are actually unassigned. So right here, two, three, and four, I have red, black, and green. Green obviously runs back to the frog, so this runs up to the frog. Two and three actually are rail A and rail B from the command station. So what I ended up doing was I tethered basically a sub bus line off the main bus line, and then I attached feeders off of here to go actually to the switch machine. So here is my black feeder. It comes in, feeds to the switch machine. Here's my red one. That one feeds into the switch machine. Whoops, right here. Here's the red one so you can see it sort of blends in with the tape there. So that's how I did the power routing of my frog. So I, I did a sub bus terminal off the main bus wire and then I, I, I basically spliced those wires in. And that's how I did all of my turnouts. 14 turnouts in total. There's DCC friendly turnouts, metal frogs. See the black lines that they are, it's electrically isolated. So I have this nice handy little tool here that gauges track power. So I'm just going to put this on here. Back it up so you can see it. So you can see 14.1 volts. Okay. So right now you can see the turnout's in a closed position. So I'm going to position, let me zoom out here just a second so you can see it. So we'll go ahead and put this on here you'll be able to read. So this is over the frog. 14.1 volts, 14.2. Sorry, it's upside down. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw the turnout. So it changed it just changed the uh, polarity of the frog, so I'm going to put it on the opposite rails. There we go. 14 volts. Whoop, move my thumb here. There we go. 14.3 volts. So there you can see that each frog is power routed. They're all like that. So when they, it just is going to reduce the likelihood that you're going to get a short as the locomotive uh, goes over the frogs of each turnout. Something else that I did on this layout was um, I have a PR3 which allows me to connect my layout to a computer and my, I have downloaded the JMRI software on the computer so you can see here I have a USB cable and this I, I just have it so I can tuck this in this is up here is the top half of the layout or the front fascia so I can basically just uh, bring my computer up set it on a, on, a, on a little TV stand tray table plug my laptop or plug the USB cable in and I'm actually connected to to my layout so I have this all set up so I can just tuck this up underneath here when it's not in use. It's hidden away so people can't see it. One of the things different that I did on this layout than I did on my last layout. My last layout I had my programming track basically on, on my workbench area. I had it all electrically separated. This layout I did it a little bit different. On this layout I actually, uh, part of the yard is what looks like to be a caboose track and I completely electrically separated that section with insulated rail joiners and I actually put in a, a gap piece of flex track to, to really ensure electrical isolation for that particular piece and then you can see right down here, here are the two feeder wires they run up and they feed up into the PR3 so I actually have the programming track on my layout I can never, I can never run a locomotive on that section of the layout so it's basically going to be used again as a caboose, uh, as a caboose yard and when I want to go and program locomotives, I just will simply you know, set one on there and uh, load up my computer and, and change the CV, CV values as I need to. Something else, this was still on the right hand side of my layout that I ran into a little bit of a problem when I built the actual bench work. I cut the holes, here's the underside of my UP5 uh, control panel. 
I cut these out before I actually laid the track because I wanted to make sure that they were centered in where I wanted them on the fascia of the layout. Well, of course, when I went to lay the track, there was a turnout literally right over top of where the UP5 is. So uh, you can kind of see right in here, I had to actually mount a Tortoise remote control uh, switch, switch controller. So this gives me the clearance. Here's my, so, so right here, here's another Tortoise. If I was trying to put this here, it would interfere where, where, where my UP5 is. I already had a hole cut in the front half of my layout, so I really didn't have any choice but to add a remote turnout. So here, here's, here's the actual tortoise. You can see there's a, there's just a small thin wire in there, and it controls the remote control. I apologize that I wasn't able to do a video of that. It was kind of a rushed deal, and I, I just I wasn't able to dedicate the time I needed to to be able to create a video for that. So. If you have any questions about it, I mean, I'm surely uh, able and willing to provide some advice. These things actually install a lot easier than what the instructions look like, so don't be intimidated by that. The last thing I'll show you here on the, on the other underside of the layout is, if you kind of notice, um, here is a large cutout section for where the uh, Walther's diesel house actually is. So uh, the diesel house is going to be one of the main features on this layout and I wanted to make sure that it looked correct so I uh, cut a hole in the top of the layout, made sure that the base of this is flush because there's inspection pits that actually sit below the track so to make sure that the diesel house is flush with my yard I had to cut this out and uh, but one of the things I wanted to do if you have locomotives parked in there um, I only have a 5 amp DCC system and if there's constant power to the diesel house, if I have three sound diesel locomotives in there, they're going to draw current off of my command station. So uh, what I ended up doing was electrically isolating the three um, rails or the three sets of track within the diesel house. So you can kind of barely see it here, but I have some feeder wires that are coming off, actually out from the base of the diesel house. And then I tether them together into a single bus line, so you can see right here, there's an electrical connection here. So if I want to, and I will need to, uh, take the diesel house off the layout, I simply come down here, unscrew these two wires. I actually have the diesel house screwed in. There's four screws that are actually holding it to the plywood here. Release those four screws, release the two wires, and then I'll be able to remove the, 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 the whole structure. So to control the power to the rails, I just installed right up here, I have just a toggle switch. So I can, I can uh, kill the power to the track anytime I want to and you know without cutting power to the entire layout. So I spent a little bit of time making sure that that um, worked because now I can park locomotives in the diesel house, kill the power to it and, and not have to worry about you know having enough um, amperage in, in my DCC system if I'm running you know other locomotives on the layout because I predominantly have sound locomotives I, I don't have very many non sound locomotives so the very last thing I'll mention about this layout is um, I think you have to be a little bit kinda crazy to do this but um, since I built this uh, layout up in my garage because I'm in a finished basement here I'm in my basement right now you can see I got carpet and everything and I didn't wanna Get a bunch of dust and debris in the carpet and never be able to clean it or spill something i did spill some paint up in the garage shockingly thankfully it cleaned up and i didn't have to worry about cleaning a mess up in the carpet but i wired this layout start to finish without doing any kind of testing on it so i ran the bus line um, hooked up all the feeder wires hooked up all the tortoises um, before i even tested it out i mean i i think you have to have a lot of confidence in your wiring ability to pull something like that off. This is my second DCC layout, so I had a pretty, I was pretty confident going into it that I was able to do all the wiring without checking my work as I went. Um, but but if you're familiar at all with wiring model railroads with DCC, you know that all it takes is putting one wire, one red wire where a black wire goes or vice versa and that one short will you know destroy your entire layout and you can see I have a lot of wires and things underneath here so to try to isolate one particular short would have been uh, short of a nightmare to try to figure that out so 
think you have to be confident. I think you have to be a little bit crazy to do something like that, but it has worked. Um, I have done some preliminary testing. Haven't run any locomotives yet, but I've, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got my amp meter out, my, my volt meter out. Tested all the uh, frogs, tested all the rails. We have good electrical current, no shorts anywhere. The um, switch that controls the diesel house works. Uh, all the tortoise work so um, it's time to put this thing together so if you have any comments about the wiring please or any questions any help or suggestions you need please fill out uh, you know a comment below and I'll, I'll get back to you so now that you've seen the underside of the layout I want to reiterate how big of a risk it was doing all of the wiring and getting everything hooked up before actually running trains on here I just assembled both halves of this about three days ago and I'm not exaggerating um, I was a little nervous when the first time I, I decided to run some trains on here because you just you never know I was unbelievably surprised that there were absolutely zero issues whatsoever with the wiring I have great electrical connectivity throughout the layout I do not have any dead spots, any areas where the locomotives have shorted out. So, um, my advice, if you're getting, if you're thinking about building a layout, take your time and add significant amount of feeder wires because it just makes running trains so much more enjoyable when you don't have to worry about trying to figure out why you have an area of the track that's dead or the diesel shorts out or, or well, your locomotive shorts out. So as with my previous layout, I actually have it set up so I can run uh, the layout with JMRI. So here I have my computer hooked up with JMRI. You can just kind of see there is a USB cable. The PR3 is actually right up underneath the layout right here. So I had it intentional so I could just drop the USB, plug it in. So if you'll watch right up here on the computer screen, that button is going to change from red to green. I'm going to head to an apply track power so you can see over on the UP5 the light panel will light up so you can see now the track power is on my JMRI is connected and is working and I have my track power and here I can go ahead and shut it off so another area of focus on my layout is going to be uh, this um, co-op and I have other videos showing how I built the co-op so the nice thing about this I have the uh, Woodland Scenic plug-and-play uh, LEDs in here and I wired up the bottom part of the layout and you saw that earlier that I had the uh, the the port basically mounted directly underneath where the uh, co-op is. So let me turn the lights in the room down here. And there you can see that the um, co-op lights up. And here it is from just a different angle. So I purposely designed this siding here to be able to um, have four covered hoppers parked on there without uh, following up the main line of the layout. One of the other things I did before I um, put the two halves together, I actually put a uh, grade crossing in right here. So you can see uh, this is actually a wood grade crossing. I have a couple cross bucks there. So then this road, I'm gonna have a road running through the layout here and at the far end I'm actually going to have uh, a flashing signal that's going to be probably one of the next videos I do I have the uh, Grade Crossing Pro to be able to um, basically have sound and animation at this crossing with uh, with a flashing signal so be looking for some of those videos so that's it for right now I just wanted to give you a brief tour here in um, videos that will be coming out soon I'll actually get some rolling stock out I've only got a couple cars out I've only got a couple locomotives I'm gonna start getting some of my stuff that's been boxed up for the last year or so get it out and start running it so you'll be able to see some uh, videos of the train running shortly so please comment if you have any questions about how, how I did some of the things I did I can certainly help you out as best I can alright till next time thank you